Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio, and today we are going to take a look at how to use our MIDI devices to be able to assign MIDI CC within our DAW. I'm sitting here with my Native Instruments Control and my Softube Conto One mixing system. Both units are able to communicate CC values to your DAW so that you can assign them to control different parameters within your DAW. Now, each DAW is different in terms of how to set this up, so we're going to cover a few different ones. We'll take a look at Logic Pro, Ableton Live, Studio One, and Cubase. But for now, let's get started by taking a look at Logic Pro. Just by connecting Console One Mixing System, it is automatically recognized by Logic. However, other control surfaces might need a manual setup under the Control Surface Setup menu. On Console One Channel, I'm going to load a MIDI CC module into the Shape section so that I can transmit CC values to Logic. I'll select CC values 0 to 7 and then turn on the section. I opened up the Logic Vintage Tube EQ. All I need to do for any device is hit Command L to open the Controller Assignments window and enter Learn Mode. At this point, click on any parameter and then touch the control on your device. I'll also map low attenuation. And then let's do this with low frequency and high bandwidth. The last step is to turn off learn mode to make sure I don't overwrite these mappings. And now I have full control over these parameters from my controller. And as you can see, I can control more than one parameter at a time. So in Logic, it's pretty simple. Okay, now let's dive on in and see how to get set up in Ableton Live. You see I inserted Sound Toys Primal Tap to my session. To begin to MIDI learn, we're going to click the MIDI button at the top right of our screen. One thing to be cautious about in any DIW is that plugins that have linked parameters can cause confusion when mapping. So I prefer to unlink parameters prior to mapping. Now click any parameter that you want to map. I'll click A. If we right click that parameter, we could see we are still in edit MIDI map mode. Now let's turn a knob on my Native Instruments control to map that control. Let's map to B and then touch the knob where we want that assigned. Let's also map the three blue knobs. If I wanted to map something such as my feedback sliders, I can map to the sliders on console one fader. On fader, I just need to hit shift mode to select to get into MIDI mode. Now I could touch a parameter and map it to a fader. Let's map all three. Now I'll turn off MIDI Learn at the top right. I have full control over my faders and knobs. And as you see, I have this full control on two totally different devices. One last thing is that in Live, you probably will need to go to Settings and to the MIDI tab to make sure your device is listed and the proper input and output ports are checked. So Ableton Live is pretty easy to set up. Now let's check out how to get up and running with Studio One. The first thing I need to do is go to my preferences and external devices to make sure our MIDI devices are listed. I'll type Softube and C1C for console one channel. Then I need to select to receive and send from the proper MIDI ports. Now I'm set up. So let's insert a Focusrite channel strip plugin. The first thing I need to do is click this gear icon. It allows us to build out our mappings. I'll load a MIDI CC module into the EQ section of console one channel. Now we need to select the device we want to assign. I'll select C1C for console one channel. I have to click MIDI learn to learn the hardware device before I assign it. Each time I turn a knob, we learn that knob. So now I have four knobs that are learned. We can close this window. Let's use the mouse to move our high frequency gain. Now let's touch the knob where we want to assign it. We see the two listed parameters at the top and just need to click the arrow to link the parameter to the knob. Let's do the same with low frequency.
will click the arrow and now they're linked. Now let's do high mid gain. And our low mid gain. Now you see we have all four of these knobs mapped. If we wanted to map a second controller, such as console one fader, we can do that so that we have the plugin fader controlled by a hardware fader. First, I'll need to select C1F at the top menu and then select MIDI learn to learn that first fader. You see, I already had another fader learned, but I wanna map this first fader. Now let's close the window. Let's move the plugin fader and then the hardware fader. Now, let's click the arrow. I now have control over the fader from my hardware. And the best part is I have two different devices connected to control different parts of this plugin. One thing you need to be careful of in Studio One is that you don't accidentally hover over or click another parameter on the way up to the top menu when you're linking the parameter. Otherwise, you might accidentally change the parameter that you're mapping. And last, let's see how to get set up in Cubase. To get started, we want to click the MIDI remote menu at the bottom. Let's add a vendor. We will type SoftTube MIDI to differentiate the MIDI map device from when it's connected as a console one controller. For model, I'll put C1F MIDI, and then we need to set the proper input and output ports. Now I'm going to select fader on the top left and touch each of my faders. I'll map six of them. I can also map buttons, so let's map six solo buttons. When I'm done clicking the hardware controls I want to map, click Go to Mapping Assistant. Here, I can map this controller to whatever I want. I added a Mog EQ. I'm going to click QC for quick controls. They're already laid out pretty much exactly how I want them. Let's click the hardware control we want to assign. And then we can assign the hardware to the quick control. Then click apply mapping. Let's map the second fader to quick control two. Apply the mapping. Let's do a total of four of them. Now let's map a button. I'll use Quick Control 7 to map the in out button so we can use a hardware button to bypass the EQ. Now click the button mapping and assign it to Quick Control 7. I'm going to close the Quick Controls menu. And you can see I could control the EQ with my faders and even control the in out with a button. I can now close the Mapping Assistant, and you see all of our mapping assignments are retained. For those of you looking to go further in Cubase, make sure to check out some of the videos from my pal, Dom Sagalas, who has some excellent content that really goes in depth on Mapping Assistant. Thanks for watching. How are you planning on using MIDI CC within your DAW? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, please help support the channel by liking the video and hitting subscribe.